Star Trek Picard Season 3 is here after the long wait from the very disappointing Season 2 that I have talked about at nauseum, including Season 1. We finally have the Next Generation cast back together. Pop Tot, who is here with me today, and I were thankful enough to watch the first six episodes thanks to Paramount and Terry Metalis. However, we're just going to talk about the first episode with spoilers, so if you have not seen the episode, please go watch that and then come back and watch our wonderful review that will be full of entertainment and us looking like total idiots. An unmitigated disaster. <laughs> first off, Pop Top, what did you think of the first episode titled The Next Generation? It's a good start from the, the prior season, which was mass massively disappointing. Overall, it's a builder episode, so there's, there's just a lot of moving parts. Of the Next Generation cast, you really only have three on the screen, I believe. The production value, the, the ship designs, and the music, by and far, so much better than season two. Yeah, I completely agree. I think I think the episode is hindered by, like you said, it's a builder episode. And from what we've seen, there's a lot more exciting things going on. You had to really lay the foundation of the rest of the season. So there's a lot of boring quotations of people talking and things being explained and this person going to hear. But overall, I agree with you. The music is so good. There's a lot of beautiful cinematic shots of the ships that remind me of watching the old Trek movies, not even the recent uh, Next Generation movies in quotations recent. Right, but right. like, you, you know, when you see the the Titan for the first time open up and it's this beautiful and it reminds me of, you know, when the Enterprise would come out with Kirk's crew and you had the right. music swelling and there's little nods and touches. The episode um, enters with the title sequence that's very familiar to the next generation, but also kind of reminded me, like I told you when we were watching, it reminded me a lot of when the Undiscovered Country had the cast sign off. It yeah. kind of reminded me of that too, but I agree with you, the production value, I complained so much in season two that it just felt well, so cheap. The opening Picard theme is very right. basic and yeah. it just lets the music and the title kind of control it. It's just very simple, very, and like you said, the Titan, uh, the cinematic of the Titan, which is what they, they called a Neo Constitution. It's the new refit Neo Constitution class. It cool. looks, it has the hull ridges like a constitution. Right. It's got the lines and it's classic and beautiful and yet ha has newer modern looks to it. A shout out to being retro modern. Right. Yeah. And that was something I complained about, you and I complained about in the previous seasons was that they went away from the familiar design language uh, of Federation ships to the, you know, invisible screens and the the ship that they were on instead of the actual oh, right. Federation ships. And they got back yeah, to the new you'd stuff. You'd mentioned that. You'd mentioned that in the one uh, few episodes we watched uh, in person together was they brought L cars back. Yeah. You know, there's, there's actual L cars and it's really cool because they've got these curved screens that go which up is, and it's, it's really is, neat. I was really surprised by the returning players. The one that popped off right off the bat to me was was uh, Jonathan Frakes, Riker. He looked like he was having so much fun. Yes. And, and that's something that continues throughout the season, which I will loosely tease without spoiling anything every now and then. But you see through the, the entire season, it looks like he's having fun. He wants well, to he, be there. He, he looks like he wants, yeah, he wants to be there. Unlike the, you know, the prior seasons, he actually looked like he wanted to be there. He It looks like he'd gotten in, in a little bit of shape. I, I don't know if that matters, but it does matter when you're wearing a captain uniform. Right. And the chemistry between him and Picard. Spotless. Is spotless. So it, it's advanced. It's no longer, it's, you know, they're, they're somewhat partners in some way, right. but there's this give and take between them now that has just pure chemistry to it. Right. Hell of a view. The kind we spent half a lifetime chasing. And the other half missing the chase. Honestly, and I know some people might have issues with this, but what they did with Seven in the first few minutes you see her, I feel like it's better than anything we saw in the previous seasons. Agreed. They allude to her being dead named, and she's being referred to as Annika, her, pro her previous name, and not Commander Seven, and the disrespect from that. And the way that Jerry Ryan carries that is done so well, and it's not overstated. Captain Shaw prefers that I use Hanson. 
And I thought they did a really good job of she's still trying to earn her respect. And I and I really like that. And she she shouldn't, but she's still well, trying to. And through this, we get introduced to the new skipper of right. the Titan, Captain Shaw. And right away, like in the in the first few minutes, you you just feel like there's a two dimensional kind of bad yep. guy there yep. that they used to throw out in the Next Generation episodes. But then it just leads into this other the those full scene between them, and we find out in later uh, episodes there's there's more dimension to this guy. Right. He, he is a really cool character. He makes this comment about the Borg that he puts uh, Seven of Nine and Picard in the same basket together, and it's really just sharp narrative. Your loyalty lies with this ship. Not to old friends, former ex-Borg. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things going on in this first episode, just watching it and then watching the later ones, you're gonna see a lot of connective tissue and a lot of that comes from Shaw, but I agree. When he first comes on the screen and you kind of get that first scene when they're on the dinner table together, he comes off like that two-dimensional admiral, and he's not an admiral, but he's just an asshole. And you're like, oh God, here's another asshole. And he's not that. And I was really surprised to see a guy that kind of is an asshole, but he also deeply cares for his crew. He's at least aware that he is who he is and all the things that he's doing. And I really enjoyed that he wasn't just a two-dimensional, hey, I'm a guy that's going to say goddamn and the F word and shit every other second. And it was it was kind of relieving to me. So let me let me ask you, though, what what's your least, and I know the answer to this already, I because I, it's probably mine, what's your least favorite part of this episode? I don't know that I readily have one off the off the top of my head. I mean, I think the episode's just, it, it's solid. I, I don't, I think the biggest problem with Picard uh, season three that we, you and I got to feel through that the audience might be suffering through is that it feels so connected that it's hard to watch it as one episode. Picard season three, and I hate when some people are like, well, this TV show is like a movie and all because the production does. It's like, no, Picard really does feel like it's a movie. It so does. when you when you watch one episode, I don't feel like you're grasping everything that when you watch three or four in a row, like something like Lost, you had that build up and all that, and there was that hype and momentum. But that hype and momentum for this show, I feel like you almost need it. What are you referring to? What is your your issue? The Rafi oh, uh, scenes seem yeah. to slow me down a little bit. Now, I love the actress, and I, I, I she's that character in Star Trek they wanted to give all those issues to. Right. And, you know, she's separated from her, her old family, and she's got past drug addictions, and... But those scenes, like, you know, you'd, you'd be getting to this chemistry with uh, Picard and, and Riker and whatnot, and then all of a sudden you'd get the yeah. Rafi scene and it kind of slid the brakes. She's on this uh, this planet that's – the sci-fi writers these days, they want to make the same planet that was in Guardians of the Galaxy, Loki, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's the same – Right. Star drug, Wars. Drug-riddled Blade, planet. Blade Runner-esque. Yeah. It's yeah. ultra neon green lights. Right. And- the crackheads on every corner. No, like I expected Rafi to pass Ben right. Kenobi and yeah. little Leia. And, you know, like, wait, what? It, it, it looked like the same planet. But other than that, I mean, far and away, the production value uh, goes all the way to the end scene. And this is when the portal device gets used on that recruitment center. Right. That was just amazing. It was so cool, you know, just not for it to fall through the hole, but to right. come out the other side and fall in the city. It was, and you can hear people screaming and feels like a movie production itself i cannot overemphasize enough how they scored this episode yep. was so it's, awesome there was really good there, there was touches of original star trek uh, score in there there's yep. touches of the next generation you just get these gobs of these feelings these flashbacks to your yep. you know the younger days watching those episodes and it's it just they do such a really good job We're going on the titan your old command First, yeah, and the first contact uh, music, which is my favorite that uh, Goldsmith did, you get that at the end when the credits come and it plays that first contact music. And then it kind of shuffles into the next generation music. I do agree with the Rafi bits. I do think it improves a little bit as the season goes on. And it does. Hang, hang on, on. Hang on. I, 
I, I think I'm one of the few people that do have an issue with that plot line because it does feel like it feels like things are going rapidly and the Picard Riker uh, Titan aspects and that part just kind of like ee, just slows down a little bit. Thankfully, I think that plot line kind of catches up to what's going on and then shit starts to roll. But no, I, I agree. What is what is your favorite moment of the entire episode? It would be, of course, the Shaw course. intro scene. The 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 dinner of them sitting around. There's at like at first you're like, oh, he's just a two-dimensional asshole. And then P yep. Picard and Riker try to pull the wool over him, yep. and he just flat out while he's chewing, and he no. says no. no. And Picard goes, you know, well, I'm an admiral, and he goes, Well, retired, congrats right. on that. I am an admiral. Retired. Congrats on that. <laughs> like a real <laughs> asshole. And yep. then Riker, Riker's like, well, I'm a captain. And he goes, without a chair. But I'm still a captain. Without a chair. You know, I, and he was like, he had an answer for everything. everything. But he was, it, it's never happened to these guys. He's, nobody says no to Riker and Picard. That was probably my favorite scene because it was, it was just really well written. The dialogue was sharp and witty. I'm surprised you didn't mention the flute because I felt like that was going to be super obvious as somebody who absolutely loves the inner light and owns a replica version of the flute. But he's talking to her and he's holding his possessions and he's talking about the people he's met, the memories he's made, and he's holding the flute. And I was just like, when he's talking about it, that entire episode like flashed in my, my brain. It was just yeah, like, and it was so cool how they did that. They are so dear to me. They're mementos of... Dear friends. The episode Inner Light is my favorite Star Trek episode of all yep. time. Yep. It's and uh, yes, uh you are correct. I do own the flute and it it it, it you know <laughs> I mean who could not hear that a dozen times right. without thinking about that episode, yep. but in the overall context of the episode, I, I just really liked that that's that dining scene. Yep. Yeah, I thought it was really good. What would you, in finality, in conclusion, what would you rate the first episode of The Next Generation? I would give it a maybe a B, uh, uh, you know, a B plus. I, I Again, it's a builder episode, and like you said, it's it's a taste, you know, and you're yeah. like, oh, th they really should have, in my mind, released one and two together. I agree. Yeah, I completely agree. Two episodes. Agree. But yeah, I, I, I'm also going to say it's a B. I think it's a solid episode. I don't think... There's a lot of things that are being put out. And one of the complaints I made about the season was that there's times where it feels like you need a whiteboard to kind of track everything that's going on. And right. I feel like this episode is kind of laying that, that there is a lot of stuff going on. And it's time oh, yeah, because we never even talked about the whole Crusher aspect, the guy that's right. with her, these weird looking aliens that are shooting yep. her. And she's on some old Federation ship that yep. has no lighting whatsoever. No. No, and I mean, that's the whole issue through this entire season is like these ships are death traps. There's no lighting anywhere. No. Somebody needs to install no. some LED lights. Go go back to the original Next Generation and see how well lit everything right. is and then it's look at the bridge of the Titan and you're like, how traps. do they not trip over everything? But yeah, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot going on and it continues. And I agree, they probably should have released the first two episodes together as a part one and part two. But either way, I liked it, you like it. We are super excited to talk about episode two and we will see you guys next week for episodes two review and uh, we'll see you talk to the next one.